Joining us on the show right now is Buffalo's newest tight end, who just put pen to paper today at One Bills Drive. He is in town. He's getting the lay of the land here. Uh, it is one Jacob Hollister. And I guess we'll start here. Do you prefer Jake or Jacob? We want to get this right here. You know, it's 50 50. I also have a twin brother. So Cody, Jake, or Jacob is really uh, names that I all go by because my brother's name is Cody. So. Uh, I answered all of them, but my, my family calls me Jacob. Everybody just calls me Jake, though. That works. All right, all right. so good enough. We'll we'll pick and choose through there and try to try right. to hit the right one more often than not. So, you you got a chance to tie this up in a bow today, uh, Jake. So maybe just walk us through the process here and and how this kind of came together for you and the Bills. Uh, yeah, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, this is my first time, obviously, dealing with free agency, and so. Going into it, um, I just told my agent I want to be in the best situation uh, when it comes to being with a team that has a great culture and a team that I'm going to be the most successful in and just be in a great, great spot. So obviously I, I have a relationship with Josh and um, I talked to him the day before I kind of committed to signing here and uh, he just had amazing things to say and that's kind of the feeling I had already. So after that, I was just really excited. I'm, I'm excited to be here right now and especially after spending some time here, I couldn't be more uh, pumped about it. So. That's how it all came together. Yeah, everybody was really uh, not surprised, but kind of interested to hear that you and Josh had been roommate or teammates at Wyoming. Tell us about that history and how that and what you saw and you know your relationship then as teammates and yeah. uh, and the way it is now. Yeah, Josh came in. Um, I actually hosted Josh when he came in to visit at Wyoming, and so I think that was my redshirt sophomore year when I had just gotten there. Um, and he came in, guy out of JUCO, and we actually related a lot right away because I was a guy that came from junior college too. Uh, and we were his, you know, his only D1 offer pretty much. And so we connected on that too. It was the same for me coming out of um, Arizona Western Junior College. Uh, I was, Wyoming was my only D1 offer. And so I watched his highlight tape and I was like, man, this guy is legit. And I don't know how we're his only offer right now, but I was super glad that, uh, super glad that we signed him. And, and obviously the rest is history. Yeah, I mean, you were a high school quarterback yourself, so uh, nice. I know. So how how did you kind of get through that transformation? I know a lot of guys change positions when they get to college from high school. I mean, heck, Dawson Knox did it too. He was a high school quarterback uh, who's going to be in the position room with you at the, in the tight end room here this season. So yeah. how did you kind of navigate your way through that? Did you just kind of take it in stride? Because it's tough being the guy with the ball in your hands on every play, and the game changes dramatically when you're not that guy anymore lining up somewhere else, right? For sure. For sure. No, it definitely changes. Uh, yeah, I just remember being at Arizona Western Junior College, and uh, my t- my head coach, Coach Minnick, called me, and he said, I feel like you switching to tight end is going to give you the best opportunity to get re-recruited at that, at that time. And so I remember calling my dad. And uh, just asked, I thought he was going to freak out. I thought my dad was going to be like, there's no way you're switching from quarterback. I grew up a quarterback. And I remember getting my first Brett Favre jersey when I was a kid. And, I, you know, I always loved playing quarterback. And I told my dad, I said, and my coach here wants me to switch to tight end. What do you think? And, and he said, Jacob, I always knew that you were going to switch to tight end. And I think it's a great idea. And, and I know it'll be a great transition for you. So at that point, I felt confident about it. My brother was there with me. And, and uh, you know, he really showed me the ropes when it came to running routes and all that. And, and the blocking kind of came along as the years went. And um, so, yeah, I've loved it ever since. How long did it take you to feel comfortable in that position? I'd say it definitely took me going to college for a year or two where I felt like I was an actual tight end. Like in junior college, I felt like I was an athlete that was running around at the tight end position. I didn't know what I was doing. But, um, you know, you know, grateful. I'm grateful that Wyoming took a chance on me and offered me and, and I ended up going there and, and I uh, learned a lot from those coaches over there. So that's where I feel like I really transitioned and, and learned a lot about the position was playing over at Wyoming. Your most productive game last season was against the Bills. Um, I know you guys didn't win the game up here back, I think it was week nine. Um, but there's Steve and I were having this conversation because sometimes you think about free agents and where they land. And I don't know if it's just something that Steve and I have noticed, but sometimes – Guys that have their most productive games against other clubs, those are the very clubs that are pursuing them in free agency. I'm curious if uh, Brandon Bean or anybody in the Bills front office brought up that game because you were productive in that game. I mean, five receptions, 60 yards. I mean, you helped keep that offense on the field. 
Yeah, no, I think that every team's always looking at that. I feel like I've, I found that trend, too, when you see a lot of teams um, that sign guys that they, they played against during, during the year or through the season. Um, so, obviously, it turned out great with these guys, and I had you know productive game that game, and Russ was hitting me, so it was fun. What is your what is the thought about you know what what were the Seahawks saying about this Bills team after you played in that game and and even Pete Carroll had come out and said listen they didn't even try to run it on us we were surprised by that what was the thought uh, I know that Russ Wilson turned it over a couple of times in that game which kind of led yeah. to the disparity you know the, where you guys were kind of in comeback mode what was the thought about the Seahawks players what they say about Josh and this Bills offense I mean I already had all the you know amazing things to say about Josh. And I feel like after that game, uh, it kind of confirmed all those, just the fact that Josh is a playmaker in so many ways. And and the other thing that you noticed right away with this team was the culture, that the guys are really close. Uh, Cause in Seattle, we, take, we would take a lot of pride in that too. And, and coming here, you see the sideline, the other sideline, and you were watching this Bills team. And you could just tell that the coaches uh, had really good relationship with the players, uh, vice versa. And the players were all really close with each other. And so that's when you know that you're going to have to deal with the whole team, you know, the whole entire game is when you know that the whole, that the team is all together as a unit. And that's what we felt from this Bills team for sure. Speaking of being all together, it's not just you and Josh. Tanner Gentry's on this roster right now. Are you guys, yeah. is Josh going to have just all you guys room together again? What's the deal here? It's like oh. Wyoming East. It's awesome, man. The wire crew is back in business. Similar uh, weather too over here. So we're used to it. Right. And then I know you've played in front of these in, in front of these, I think you played here in front of fans before, right? When you were with New England, you've been here, so you've experienced that game day atmosphere. Uh, what's it going to be like, you think, to be on the right side of it? <laughs> <laughs> it'll be uh, it'll be nice to be on this side of it rather than, you know, fans screaming at us coming in and stuff like that, especially when I was in New England. I'll be on the right side of it watching the fans break tables and stuff like that, so that'll be a lot of fun. Well, I'm Jacob, it's, it. it's, it's great talking to you. Congratulations on the signing. I uh, can't wait to see you guys take the field, and uh, we wish you all the best. Have a great offseason. Any word on what that's going to look like this offseason? Any more normal? No word yet. Yeah, we'll find out here pretty soon. All right. Well, thanks for giving us some time. We know you got some other media commitments. Good luck. We thanks, look forward man. to seeing you on the field, Jacob. Thanks. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one. 